Morning stiffness is a characteristic symptom and diagnostic criteria of rheumatoid disease that affects synovial joints. It occurs in inflammatory as well as in non-inflammatory joint disease. But what is interesting is that the duration of morning stiffness between non-inflammatory joint disease as osteoarthritis and inflammatory joint disease as rheumatoid arthritis, for example, is radically different. In osteoarthritis, morning stiffness lasts no longer than 30 minutes. But in inflammatory joint disease as rheumatoid arthritis, morning stiffness lasts more than one hour. So basically we are interested in why joint stiffness develops, what factors determine the duration and severity of morning stiffness, and why joint stiffness is most pronounced in the morning. To explain why joint stiffness develops, let's take rheumatoid arthritis. In rheumatoid arthritis, due to the initial break in immune tolerance, CD4 positive T cells stimulate macrophages activity. And macrophages begin to produce pro inflammatory cytokines, primarily its interleukin 1 and tumor necrosis factor, that activate fibroblastic synovial cells. Activation of fibroblastic synovial cells first of all results in synovial hyperplasia. The mechanism is that tumor necrosis factor and interleukin 1 cause dysregulation of apoptosis of fibroblastic cells. This markedly increase fibroblastic cell survival and also they stimulate fibroblastic cell's proliferation rate. This results in progressive accumulation of fibroblastic synovial cells that cause dramatic increase in thickness of synovium. For example, in normal condition it comprises 1 to 3 cell layers and in rheumatoid arthritis it can increase to 15 cell layers and exactly this called synovial hyperplasia. Also with activation, the contractility of fibroblastic cells increase, and in this state they are called myofibroblast-like synoviocytes, and exactly this increased contractility causes stiffness of synovial tissue. Also activated fibroblastic cells stimulate conversion of macrophages to cyclos. The mechanism is that with activation of fibroblastic synovial cells, they increase production of RUNCL, which is receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa beta ligand, and macrophage colony stimulating factor, and recall that when monocytes from blood come into tissue, they become macrophages, and macrophages in synovial tissue with stimulation by RUNCL and macrophage colony stimulating factor can be transformed into osteoclasts. So by RUNCL and by macrophage colony stimulating factor secretion, activated fibroblastic cells stimulate differentiation of macrophages to osteoclasts. And osteoclasts by matrix metalloproteinases production cause cartilage destruction. Also, activated fibroblastic cells begin to produce numerous chemokines and cytokines. The concept is that with activation, fibroblastic synovial cells begin to produce various chemokines that increase chemotaxis of leukocytes, particularly neutrophils, and lymphocytes, particularly T lymphocytes, to synovium. This results in infiltration of synovium by inflammatory cells. Also, they begin to excessively produce various pro-inflammatory cytokines that stimulate inflammatory cells activity. High yield to know that by production of interleukin-6, fibroblastic cells affects B lymphocytes. Interleukin-6 stimulates B cell survival. This causes increase in B cells in synovium and in subsynovial layers. Basically, they even form germinative centers in subsynovial layers, so it stimulates infiltration of synovium by B cells that greatly contributes to synovial infiltration overall by pro-inflammatory cells. And also, interleukin-6 increases B cells class switching and maturation. This increases their differentiation to plasmocytes that produce antibodies. So, by interleukin-6 production, fibroblastic cells increase B cells activity. Ok, again, activated fibroblastic cells by chemokines and cytokines production cause infiltration of synovial tissue by inflammatory cells, and also they increase inflammatory cells activity. And synovial hyperplasia with synovial infiltration by inflammatory cells at some point cause hypoxia of synovial tissue. The concept is that with synovial hyperplasia there is increased quantity of fibroblastic cells in synovium. And with infiltration of synovium by inflammatory cells, there is increased quantity of inflammatory cells, and every cell needs nutrients to maintain homeostasis. And if cell demands does not exceed nutrients delivery, everything relatively fine. But the more severe becomes synovial hyperplasia, and the denser becomes synovial infiltration by inflammatory cells, 
the higher become quantity of fibroblasts and inflammatory cells in synovium, and at some point of cells accumulation, cell demands exceed nutrients delivery to synovial tissue, and this causes hypoxia of synovial tissue. And hypoxia, first of all, induce angiogenesis, because with increase in blood vessels, nutrients delivery increase, and also it stimulates fibroblasts to produce collagen, so-called hypoxia-induced collagen synthesis. So synovial hyperplasia and infiltration of synovium by inflammatory cells cause hypoxia of synovial tissue that induce angiogenesis and collagen production. Angiogenesis and increased collagen production are important because they greatly increase synovial tissue mass. Because the highest vascularization and the highest connective tissue production, the highest growth potential of any tissue, particularly of inflamed synovium. And do not forget that myofibroblast contractility makes synovial tissue very stiff. So, of course, the bigger is stiff synovial tissue mass, the more severe becomes joint stiffness. Increase in inflammatory cells activity, first of all, aggravates overall inflammation in the joint by cytokines production. And also by cytokines production and by production of proteases, inflammatory cells increase permeability of synovial membrane. And this results, first of all, in increase in synovial fluid production, because recall that synovial fluid is produced by filtration of plasma through synovial membrane. So obviously with increase in synovial membrane permeability, synovial fluid production increase, and this results in joint effusion that contributes to joint stiffness. Also with inflammation, permeability of synovial membrane increase also for neutrophils. So with inflammation, neutrophils concentration in synovial fluid increase, and in synovial fluid they begin to produce proteases that cause cartilage destruction. And cartilage destruction contributes to joint stiffness because this cartilage makes interactions between bones very smooth. And also neutrophils destroy hyaluronan protein complex. This fact is aggravated by decrease in hyaluronan production by activated fibroblastic cells. To explain this, recall that fibroblastic synovial cells produce hyaluronin, that in synovial fluid makes complex with protein, and this hyaluronin protein complex first of all provides cartilage lubrication, and also because of high water binding capacity, this complex keeps synovial fluid within the joint space. And with inflammation, fibroblastic cells become activated, and in activated states, the production of hyaluronin decreases. Also with inflammation, neutrophils concentration in synovial fluid increase, and neutrophils produce lysosomal enzymes that destroy cartilage, and also they ruin hyaluronan protein complex, and this results in decrease in interjoint photobinding capacity and in decrease in cartilage lubrication. So decrease in hyaluronan complex concentration in synovial fluid results in decrease in cartilage lubrication that contributes to joint stiffness, and also it decreases interjoint photobinding capacity, and this causes edema of synovial tissue that also contributes to joint stiffness. So as we see joint stiffness as a symptom caused by a variety of factors. Of course, some factors contribute to joint stiffness to a greater extent, for example, increase in myofibroblast in synovial tissue, also synovial hyperplasia with inflammatory cells infiltrations that promote growth of synovial tissue, by the way, in rheumatoid arthritis, synovium that has osteoclast, myofibroblasts, pronounced synovial hyperplasia and inflammatory cells infiltration called PANUS. So we can say that PANUS is the major factor in rheumatoid arthritis that determine joint stiffness, but such factors as cartilage destruction, decrease in cartilage rubrication, joint fusion and edema of synovial tissue are also important factors. But why in rheumatoid arthritis morning stiffness lasts substantially longer than in osteoarthritis, for example? Basically, the main factor that determine joint stiffness is inflammation. The highest stimulation of macrophages and other pro-inflammatory cells, the highest fibroblastic synovial cell stimulation, the more pronounced the pathological changes. And in osteoarthritis, for example, mechanical damage cause cartilage destruction. Fragments of cartilage extracellular matrix break off and appear in synovial fluid. And when they come in contact with synovial inner layer, they stimulate macrophages, and macrophages promote inflammation. And recall that everything depends on the level of pro-inflammatory cytokines, because their level determines severity of inflammation. 
First of all, direct autoimmune stimulation by CD4 positive cells cause incomparably stronger stimulation of macrophages and other pro inflammatory cells than any mechanical damage. That's why osteoarthritis is considered non inflammatory joint disease, not because there is no inflammation, but because inflammation in osteoarthritis is minimal compared to inflammatory joint disease as rheumatoid arthritis. So in osteoarthritis, the level of pro-inflammatory cytokine secretion is substantially lower than in rheumatoid arthritis. And because of that, pathological changes that determine joint stiffness are less severe, and this results in less pronounced joint stiffness. For example, in normal condition, synovium comprise 1 to 3 cell layers. In rheumatoid arthritis, synovium increased to 10 to 15 cell layers. And in osteoarthritis, because inflammation is substantially lower, synovial hyperplasia is less severe, and in osteoarthritis, synovium comprise approximately 3 to 5 cell layers. Also, in osteoarthritis, there is only minimal increase in inflammatory cells in synovium. And because synovial hyperplasia and infiltration of synovium by inflammatory cells are minimal, in osteoarthritis, there is no hypoxia of synovial tissue. So there is no hypoxia-induced angiogenesis and collagen production, and obviously pathological effects that are caused by them are absent. In the same way, in osteoarthritis, other pathological changes are less pronounced. This results in less severe pathological effects, thereby in less pronounced joint stiffness. So the major factor that determine severity and duration of morning stiffness is severity of inflammation in the joint. And exactly due to this reason, joint stiffness is more severe in the morning. The concept is that most, if not all systems in human organism are partially regulated by circadian rhythm. And circadian rhythm is mediated through production by pineal gland of melatonin. In daytime, melatonin in the blood is undetectable. But during the night, melatonin level is significantly higher. And melatonin stimulates mononuclear cells activity, its TNP lymphocytes, monocytes, and also macrophages. With stimulation, they increase their secretion of pro-inflammatory cytokines, particularly tumor necrosis factor, interleukin 1 and 6. The level of these cytokines increase from midnight with maximal level at morning. And the highest pro-inflammatory cytokine secretion, the more pronounced are inflammatory pathological changes, so the more severe is joint stiffness. But it's not all. Recall that the strongest anti-inflammatory substance in human organism is cortisol. Cortisol inhibits secretion of pro-inflammatory cytokines. And guess what? Cortisol secretion is also regulated by circadian rhythm. From evening till the end of night, cortisol level in the blood is low. And only in early morning, cortisol secretion progressively increases and reach peak at 8-9 am. So it occurs that in the night when pro-inflammatory cytokine secretion progressively increase, cortisol level is inadequately low, and this results in increased inflammation in the night till early morning. And the highest inflammation, the more pronounced is joint stiffness. So approximately cortisol level in the blood looks like this, with maximum at 8-9 am and low level at night. And this increased cortisol secretion with maximum level at 8-9 am is enough to inhibit inflammation during the day. That makes joint stiffness less pronounced. So because at early morning the level of pro-inflammatory cytokines is maximal and cortisol level in the blood is minimal, joint stiffness is more severe at early morning, that's why it's called morning stiffness.